Welcome back to Hackwood. In this video, we dive into a problem coding problem, sub tier fund entry. Whether you are preparing for coding interviews or just want to show up on your team manipulation skills and data structures, this video is for you. Stay tuned as we break down the problem and explore the solution and implement it together. So here, given the roots of your two binary trees, root and subroot, written true, if there is a subtree of root within the same structure and root node values of subroot and false otherwise. A subtree of a binary tree is a tree that consists of a node in the tree and all of its descendant nodes. So the tree could also be considered as a subtree of itself. So here uh, the problem statement is like so we are given two binary trees root and the subroot and the goal is to determine if the there is a subtree such that it's there's a let's say we uh, we call this uh, trace as s and t the goal is to determine if the tree t is a subtree of another tree s its subtree means uh, that t must act exactly match the same subtree in s starting from same node with an s and continue down, downward so basically uh, let's look into the examples to make it more clear in the examples we see that uh, the, the root is given as this tree this is a basically uh, full tree and the subroot is just like a, it could be a part of the tree or it could be some totally different tree. So uh, as we see here, uh, the subroot is exactly matches with all this descendants. So in this case, we return true. So in example two, we see that uh, the sub, uh, subroot is there in the parent tree, but the descendants don't match. So in this case, we should return false. So the constraints here are like number of nodes in the root tree or in the enclosure range of one to 2000 and the number of nodes in the subroot uh, is in a range of 1 to 1000. So the root value is in the enclosure range of minus 10 power 4 to 10 power 4. So when the subroot value is also in the enclosure range of minus 10 power to 10 power 4. So this is the uh, initial uh, boilerplate code given. So we need to uh, make a solution for it. So let's look into the algorithm. So here uh, first is to we need to check if the subroot is none. If so, return true. So in this case, uh, let's uh, as we discussed, let's consider t as a subroot and s as a main tree root. So if t is none, it means that the subtree t is empty. So an empty t can be uh, considered as a subtree of any tree, including the empty tree itself. So we, we should return to. So like therefore, if it is none, we can return to to indicate that the empty subtree t is in, uh, indeed a subtree of the tree s. So if the root is none, uh, we return false. So basically if root is none, it indicates that the subtree cannot be found further down this branch. Therefore we return false to indicate that the subtree is not found at this level in the main tree. Next step is if the node, current nodes of the root and the subroot are identical, we return true. So after that we need to recursively check if the subroot is the subtree of the left subtree of the root and then uh, similarly we have to check for subroot is the subtree of the right subtree of the root. So if neither condition satisfies, we return false. So let's look at the flowchart here. So we start with uh, checking if, uh, if subroot is none, if yes, we return true. If no, we check if root is none, if yes, we return false. Uh, so if no, we check if the subroot are identical, if yes, we return true. If no, we check if subroot is a subtree of roots left, if yes, return true. No, uh, in, uh, in other case, we need to check if the subroot is a subtree of roots right. If yes, we return true. If no, we return false. So let's look into the dry run. Uh, we're taking the uh, these two trees here. This is the main tree and this is the sub tree. So here in this dry run, uh, we start with the root at the we start with the root of the root tree, uh, and then the sub. So here the sub root is not none, right? So and the root is also not none. So we continue, and after that uh, we check if the current node of a root and sub tree uh, like three and four, right? These are not identical. So we proceed to check if there is any uh, uh, possibility of uh, like similar in the descendants. So we check if subroot is a subtree of the left subtree of four. So at node four, we see that the subroot is identical to the left subtree. So we return true. And then the subtree is found in the left subtree of the root. So it's, it's a true for this case. So this completes the dry run demonstrating how the algorithm towers the tree and determines if subroot is a subtree of the root. So let's look into the code here. So as we discussed, the base case is always we, we check if subroot is subtree is none. Uh, in that case, it's considered as a subtree of any tree because it's an empty tree, right? Empty is subtree of any tree. So we return true. 
in the next case we need to check if uh, the main tree itself is a none but subtree is not none if subtree is none we would have filtered here right so here uh, the subtree cannot be found if the root is none so that's why we written false and the next check is to we check recursively for the each um, node if the subroot exists uh, either in the left part of the no root or in the right part of the root tree so uh, if this returns true we return true we have defined a method here for the same tree here and then uh, uh, moving on in this further we need to uh, recursively check the left and the right subtrees of the main tree and the uh, subroot so this is what we're doing here so root dot left and the subroot and uh, we're doing or condition because either of them matches then we should return true so in the method so here we we taking the input of the main tree node and the subtree node so first case base case is like uh, we check if both trees are none uh, it says that uh, if both are none it means empty tree so empty tree is a sub, uh, basically a subset of the empty tree right so we should return true and then uh, next thing uh, we check if the values match and recursively compare the left and right subtrees basically this check uh, if both nodes are exist and the values of the each uh, like root uh, current node is same and we recursively check if this is same for the left subtree of the main tree and the left subtree of the child tree or the subtree so similarly uh, this is for the left and this for the right so if any of the condition fails the tree is not identical so we return false complex analysis the time complex t is uh, of n into m where n is the number of nodes in the root tree and m is the number of nodes in the subroot tree so for each node in the root uh, the algorithm potentially check every node in the subroot uh, in the worst case especially when the tree values are similar so it's a o of n into m so the space complexity is o of h where h is the maximum height of the tree root this space complexity is required for the recursion stack as the algorithm performs the depth first search to the tree so in the worst case scenario of the skewed tree the space complexity will be o of n so where n is the uh, number of nodes in the taller tree Time on conclusion. I've got the code ready here. Let's try submitting this. So it beats eighty-five point five percent. So almost the better solution. So conclusion. Our approach shows how recursive functions can simplify the complex tree-based problems by breaking them down into manageable chunks at each node. So while the time complexity can be high in the cases with the large and similar trees, the method is generally effective for the wide range of inputs. This algorithm is a good example of Im uh, importance of understanding the tree traversal and recursion for the software development and technical interviews. Mastery of these techniques uh, opens the door for solving more complex tree-related problems efficiently. Thank you for tuning into the episode of Hack Code. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for the more coding tutorials and more awesome stuff. If you have any questions or any specific topics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, happy coding.